Today's video might be a little short. We don't know. Depends on what it is that I want to say, what it is that I got to say. Hope everybody out there is doing good. I just need the video to focus back on me. There we go. Hi, it is me, Isaiah Zavon. Let me take off these slippers. Now I look short. Let me go ahead and just put them right back on. Today we're going to talk about something that uh, we're going to make the brand new gay quiz. Not really, but we're going to, um, um, <laughs> we're just going to, we're going to talk about how to know your sexuality, right? Or at least maybe not necessarily how to know if you're gay, how to know if you're straight, how to know all these things, but rather analyzing and investigating the things that you believe to be true about yourself, about sexuality and about attraction. I always often see people saying online, you know, I want me a man. <laughs> wow. I want me a man who is intelligent, who's smart, who's who is kind and faithful and loyal and strong. I see people either sex saying that. And then I think if you're a heterosexual woman saying that, you want someone who's strong, who's kind, who's loving, who's loyal. Can't women give you that? And if you're a gay man who's saying the same thing, can't women give you that? And, and then the same thing with heterosexual men. I want me a girl who's, you know, she's smart, she's kind, she's loyal, she's good. She can't men give you that? Because there's someone on this earth who occupies a, a body that you claim to not be attracted to, who can give you everything that you're wanting. But, this is where an analogy is going to come along later on, it's not encased in the thing you want it to be in. It's not presented to you in the thing you want it to be in. And this is why I think sexuality is so important and why I think having conversations about sexuality and what that means, how people perform their sexuality is very, very important. So we're going to get into it. I like to think about <laughs> uh, sexuality as this. Here's the analogy. <clears throat> We've all seen the trash bins that are trisectioned, right? Recycle, waste, bottles. Think about it like that. And we've also, most of us have seen, have seen videos where those three sections lead to the exact same trash bag. It's for show. There really is no three different trash cans for the recyclables, the waste, and the bottles. It just all goes to the exact same place. That's sexuality for a lot of us, for human primates. I'm gonna break this down. I'm gonna give you a little bit. Pause the video if you have to. I want you to bring out a journal or just think about it or don't even think about it. I mean, I really don't care. Girl, it's your life, do whatever you want. What is it that you like about if you are heterosexual, homosexual, bisexual, pansexual, whatever. What is it that you like? Imagine the being you would want to be with, potentially, right? What is it that you like about that sex that is not physical or sexual? That is not about physical objectification or sexual desire. So it's not their voice, not their hair, not their face, not, their not the curvature of their body, none of it, none of it. Think about that. What is it that you like about them that is any of that? If you did the exercise, you'll recognize, okay, if I like women and it's not about their body, it's not about what I want to do with them in the bedroom. Okay, I feel like a moment women are more sensitive, women are more vulnerable, women uh, are, are, are more like passionate or X, Y, and Z. And then I would argue, you can find all of that in the sex to which you potentially don't want to be with. Now, if you're pansexual or bisexual or sapiosexual or the list goes on. It doesn't really apply to you because, girl, y'all are amazing. But for the people who are uh, attracted to one specific sex, I ask you this to say we must continue to analyze our sexuality. And what is it that actually makes you attracted to that? Because if you can find vulnerability, sensitivity, love, passion, desirability in someone you never thought you'd actually be with, then what does that say? 
it says that we're human mammal primates and that physical it shows that how we show up in space actually matters much more to us than we think and it's not shallow there's a lot about evolutionary biology if i was raised around a pack of wolves right and i never knew humans at some point i would believe that i'm a wolf and then at some point I would be able to understand what attraction looks like within that pack, within that group, within that species. But because I was raised around human beings, I am now told what is beautiful and what is not, what I should be attracted to and what I should not be attracted to. Hormonal study of the brain shows that there is a lot. There's a lot that's happening in the brain when it comes to sexual identity when it comes to attraction. So it's not trying to change what you like, it's about getting more articulate about the thing that you like, about what you like and why you like it. Why is it that I find this specific thing to be attractive? If you take away the physical armor and the sexual armor, you're left with the trash bin where there's a pool of everyone. So then you must say, wait a minute, if I can find masculinity within females, and I actually am attracted to that masculinity. Why? Here we go. It's the presentation. It's the performative aspect of said masculinity, right? When I see a girl with a backwards cap, you know, baggy shirt, you know, walking in a way that traditionally I would see men, specifically heterosexual or more masculine presenting men walk, there's something that happens in the brain. There's an attraction to it, to that masculinity, but not necessarily the female body, but rather that body's, that body's interpretation and presentation of the thing I claim to like. Hence why many heterosexual men do not like women who are more masculine presenting because it threatens their sexuality, it threatens their manhood, it threatens their masculinity. They want a woman who when dipping her hand into the pool of endless possibilities, pulls up femininity. That's what they want. They want a woman who, all of these things that we ascribe to be feminine, she holds and harnesses. That's what they want. Hence why a lot of gay men are femphobic and don't like femininity. Because we've been told in our society masculinity is the thing that can't protect you and a lot of gay men want to feel like they're protected want to be protected by a man hence why the top in a relationship gay relationship is always seen as the leader because topping is associated with masculinity which is associated with power which is associated with control and the bottom is submissive hence why people ask gay couples who's the man and who's the woman insinuating that the man is the lead while the woman is the more submissive one. Now, some people out there in the world want to live like that. If you want to live like that, go ahead. But at least investigate why you want to live like that. This all goes back to some core things. If we as primates are, are attracted to the physical armor that people have, right, then we must be articulate about that. If you like men, do you like the way they present their hair? Their jawline, their lips, how their, their, their face comes together. Do you like the, the shape of their body? How their collarbone caresses into their shoulder and rolls down their back? What is it that you enjoy? What is it that you like? And if it's purely sexual, then I think because we are primates, as long as you can art articulate why, then that's what it is. But a problem comes when I've asked this question before, I'm going to use this example. Do you like men? Do you like masculinity? Or do you like the male body? Three different things. Men is the presentation of both of the last two. Do you like masculinity? Just the presentation. The leather jacket, the backwards hat, these performative aspects of masculinity, but deeper at the root, things that we attribute to be associated with masculinity, stoicism, power, leadership, control, fervor, passion, right? These things that we associate to be with masculinity, actually that can exist within masculinity, but should not only solely exist to men. Or do you like the male body? Do you just like, like, could you just exist with a sex toy for the rest of your life, a sex doll? Could you? 
like within 50 to 100, 30, 20 to 100 years, when this technology gets so good that we start making humanoid beings that look like humans, act like humans, behave like humans, you can do anything it is that you want with them, and are basically human, but just not a part of the evolutionary uh, primate human family, but are an artificial uh, creation of that, would you get with that? If the answer is no, then why? Because it's not a part of your species. And that's where this breakdown is important. Because if you claim to like women as a straight man, but you don't like gay men, there's something going on there. Not like gay men romantically, but even like them platonically. Because I'm gonna dumb it down for some of the baboon-brained apes out there. This isn't what I believe, but this is the only way I can get through to some of you. Imagine gay men like they are women in males' bodies. Imagine that. You wanna be in a romantic relationship with a female femininity or the female body. Cause a lot of these men, straight men do not like femininity. They think femininity is weird, it's weak, it's less than them, it's vulnerable, it's, it's, it's powerless, and they could just exist with their boys for the rest of their life. So then what do you actually like? Oh, she looks pretty. Why? Strip that away, strip the sexual away, strip the physical away, and you realize, wait a minute, Everybody on earth harnesses all of those things that I claim to like that exist within women. Now, when it comes to scientific research and evidence, um, we do know that each sex does operate differently, that chemicals, that hormones operate differently within all of us. But then I question, if you like women, then you need, as a straight man, you need to invest in learning about the female period in learning about the menstrual cycle, in learning about, in learning about all the aspects that comes with being a woman in this world, so that you now know the language. You can talk to her about these things. You're not leaving her out stranded when she needs your help. You need to learn about the opposite sex and understand what's going on, even if it's just that one person. Are you willing to invest that time? And if you're not, stop ruining these women. But all of this comes back to, to, to what I'm saying at its core, which is, there is no one singular gene that can determine what it is that you like. What I want to investigate is you investigating why it is you claim to like that thing. We cannot run from the fact that those boxes, the gift wrap, is vital, crucial, and so important to us, right? We can't ignore that. It matters. To us as human mammal primates, what I see when I'm walking down the street matters. And we as primates must admit and must be honest with ourselves, like we li if we like hair, we like hair. If we like eyes, if we like booty, we like if we like these certain things, we like these certain things, but let us not run away from the truths of who we might actually be in search for a falsity that we're trying to become. I'm getting hot again, I'm gonna go. Love y'all. Take care. Bye-bye.